Let's now go ahead over uh, go over a sample problem. And this sample problem is basically the following. Here we're given three molecules, and for each molecule or ion, we want to determine A, the best Lewis structure, uh, B, we want to determine the electron and molecular geometries, and determine if it's polar or nonpolar overall. All right, then, let's go ahead and do this one. So xenon trioxide. So my central atom is going to be xenon. Okay, I'm going to surround the xenon with the oxygens, like that, and I'm going to connect everything to the center like that. I'm then going to proceed and um, complete everybody's octet. So each oxygen is going to need uh, three lone pairs, and the xenon is going to need one lone pair itself. All right then, let's go ahead and see if um, we have used the exact number of valence electrons allotted to us. Okay. Three oxygens contribute seven, uh, six valence electrons. Excuse me. So that's eighteen from oxygen. Okay, the one xenon contributes eight valence electrons, and so I have a grand total of twenty-six valence electrons that I can use. And let's go ahead and see if we have used twenty-six. So it's two, four, six, two, four, six. Okay, eight, ten, twelve. Uh, 14, 16, 18, uh, 20, 22, 24, and 26. So this looks all right. Everybody's octet is complete, and I've used exactly 26 valence electrons. Let's look at the formal charges, though. The formal charge of the xenon is going to be 8 minus 5, which is positive 3. Each oxygen is negative 1. Okay. So remember, formal charges of zero are best, everybody. And so positive three is pretty far from zero. So there is another Lewis structure that we can draw. And it's basically a resonance structure. Remember that xenon is, in, is an element in period three or higher. So it can actually um, come up with more than an octet. And it turns out that we can come up with a Lewis structure for xenon trioxide, like that. And when I do this, look what happens to all my formal charges. Oxygens are now zero, and xenon has a formal charge of now zero. So that's going to be better than our left Lewis structure, everybody. So our best answer here is going to be that one. OK, next molecule. Oh, polarity. OK, so oxygen is more electronegative than xenon. So I got one dipole that way, one that way, and I got one that way. Um, this is a trigonal uh, pyramid geometry with a 109.5 degree uh, bond angle uh, less than that, so less than 109.5. And so when I think about this three-dimensionally, these three arrows that we've just drawn do not cancel. And so this molecule is expected to be um, polar, everybody. Okay, The dipole arrows do not cancel. All right. I3, 1 minus, this is going to be triiodide. So in this case, it's going to be iodine, iodine, iodine. Let's go ahead and connect everything to the center of a single bond. And let's go ahead and assign uh, lone pairs to complete everybody's octet now. This iodine on the left needs three. This iodine on the right needs three. And the iodine in the middle is going to need uh, two lone pairs. And again, this is all going to be a negative one anion. Let's go ahead and do the valence electron count. So I have three iodines, each contributing seven valence electrons, giving me a grand total of 21. I have one uh, additional valence electron from the negative one charge, which means I can only use a grand total of 22 valence electrons. So that's 11 pair. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Everybody. Uh oh, um, this is not. This we're too few now. Okay. Now. We're two electrons shy, everybody. So we're not going to try multiple bonding. But remember, iodine is in period three or higher. So I can actually have another lone pair on the central atom to, come to um, have more than eight electrons. Let's see if the formal charges, though, are happy. This iodine here on the left has a formal charge of zero. This one on the right has a formal charge of zero. And this one in the center has a formal charge of negative one, everybody. And does everything add up to the overall charge? 
The answer is yes. And so this is a valid Lewis structure, everybody. And remember, iodine is somewhat electronegative in Funkel Brisch, and so it's going to be perfectly fine with a negative formal charge. Okay, so that's the Lewis structure, everybody, for triiodide. What's the geometry then? The geometry, everybody, is what we call linear, and that's going to be a 180 degree bond angle. And so um, this molecule is going to also be nonpolar because this molecule is homonuclear, which means we have no difference in electronegativity among the atoms. Okay, then. Last example, everybody, is going to be SF5 or sulfur pentafluoride. Okay, central atom in the middle is sulfur. I'm going to surround the center with all fluorines, like that. And I'm going to connect everything to the center using a single bond, like that. Okay, the next row, the next step is to uh, complete everybody's octet using lone pair of electrons. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and you see sulfur has already an octet. In fact, it has more than an octet, but that's okay because it's in period three or higher. So, everybody seems to be good to go. Let's go ahead and do a valence electron count. I have five sulfurs, each contributing six valence electrons, giving me 30. I'm sorry, my, my, my apologies. I got one sulfur contributing six valence electrons, giving me six. And I have five fluorines, each contributing seven, um, seven valence electrons, uh, giving me a grand total, everybody, of 35 uh, valence electrons. And so when I add this up, I get a grand total of uh, 41 uh, valence electrons, everybody. Okay, so 41 valence electrons. Um, let's go ahead and see if this is right or wrong. Okay. So there's a little typo here, everybody. I'm very sorry about that. Um, this shouldn't be SF5. Um, this should be um, a PF5. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and change that. My apologies. I'm going to go ahead and make that PF5, everybody. So now it's phosphorus pentafluoride. And so phosphorus is going to be in the middle now. And so I'm going to change sulfur to phosphorus. And phosphorus is uh, going to be in column 5. And that's going to contribute 5 valence electrons. And so my total is going to be 40 valence electrons, everybody. Let's see if we use 40 valence electrons or not, which is 20 pair. Okay, so 2... 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, um, excuse me, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and a grand total of 40 electrons, everybody, or 20 pair. So yes, um, this is the uh, valid Lewis structure for phosphorus pentafluoride, everyone. Okay, so this was um, a molecular shape and geometry, everybody, uh, using VSEPR theory. And um, this, is, this molecule is going to be uh, nonpolar because everything uh, is canceled with all the dipoles. You can see everything, everyone, is going to be canceled just like that. Okay, then. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your attention, and I'll see you next time on educator.com.